Hey there, Mr. Weaver here, and this is Module 7, Lesson 3, Elimination Using Addition and Subtraction. After this lesson, you need to be able to solve systems of equations by eliminating a variable using addition, and solve systems of equations by eliminating a variable using subtraction. Let's learn solving systems of equations by elimination with addition. In previous lessons, we learned about two other ways to solve systems of equations. We learned graphing, where we just find the point of intersection, and we learned substitution, where we can plug one equation into the other and solve for the remaining variable. The third method to solve these same systems of equations problems is by elimination. So elimination is a method that involves eliminating a variable by combining the individual equations within a system. And one way we can combine these together is by adding. So our key concept here is elimination using addition. First, you're gonna write the system so the like terms with opposite coefficients are aligned. And we'll see what that looks like in a minute. Then we're gonna add the equations, which will eliminate one variable. And we're gonna add just like we've learned in elementary school. Then we're gonna solve the remaining equation. And then finally, just like with substitution, once we know what one of the variables is worth, then we're gonna plug that value in and solve for the other variable. And then finally, write our answer as a coordinate. Example one, elimination using addition. So we're going to use elimination to solve the system of equations. So first, we need to align terms with opposite coefficients. So here we're given 3x plus 5y equals 11 and 5x minus 5y equals 5. In almost all of the problems that work for elimination, you're going to want it to look like this, where it's in standard form, something x plus something y equals a constant for both equations. Line up the x's, line up the y's, line up the constants. Then we're gonna find the ones that have opposite coefficients. So we have plus five with our y and minus five with our y. Those are opposites. Because we see they have opposite coefficients, we can add the coefficient and that's going to eliminate the y. So whatever one that has the opposite, that's the one that's gonna be eliminated. When we do that, we can have three x plus five y equals 11, adding it just like we have done before, plus five y minus five y, that goes to zero. 3x plus 5x is 8x, 11 plus 5 is 16. So we're adding down just like we probably did when we learned how to do addition in younger grades. Now I just have a one step equation, eight times x equals 16. So my next step would be to divide by eight, which makes x equal to two. Now that I know that x equals two, I can take either equation and I'm gonna plug two in for x. So let's take the first equation here since they're all positive numbers, three, times two is six, and then plus five y equals 11. Now to solve for y, I would subtract six from both sides. So I would get five y equals five. Then dividing both sides by five, I end up with y equals one. So our final solution then, we just saw y was equal to one. That's your second number of your coordinate. And that was what happened when we plugged in two for x. So our final solution is two, one. Oops. Check your understanding. Use elimination to solve this system. Pause the video now and complete the check. Check your answer. You should have said that the solution was at negative nine, five. To get that, if we add these together, this time our x's have opposites, so they would make zero x, it would be gone. Adding these together, 13 plus negative three would be 10 with a y. 20 plus 30 is equal to 50. So then I would divide by 10. And y must be equal to 5, which is what is here. Then choosing one to plug it back in. Again, I'm going to pick the one with the positive numbers. So I have 5x plus 13 times 5. That was y equals 20. This is 65. So if I subtract 65 from both sides, I get 5x equals negative 45. Dividing both sides by 5, I get x is negative 9, which is good because that's what they told us the answer was. Let's learn solving systems of equations by elimination with subtraction. Sometimes your coefficients will be opposites, just like we saw, and that's when we're gonna use addition. When the coefficients are the same, so they're either both positive or both negative, then we're going to use subtraction to eliminate one of the variables. Our key concept here then is the elimination method using subtraction. So the steps here are pretty much the same as addition, except when you write it, you're going to line up so the terms that have the same coefficients are aligned. So here you're gonna be looking for same coefficients. Then you're gonna subtract one from the other and make sure you subtract everything, not just the first terms. 
And then once you get your value of your variable that remains, plug it back in just like we were doing before and write your answer as a coordinate. Example three, elimination using subtraction. Use elimination to solve the system of equations. We have 3x plus 6y equals 30 and 5x plus 6y equals 6. So first we're going to align our terms with the same coefficients. Here we can see we have plus 6 and plus 6. They are the same. That's going to be our indication that we want to use subtraction. So since we have plus 6y and plus 6y, we can subtract them and that will eliminate y. So just like we were doing with addition, we're going to subtract. And we're going to do that for each part here. So 3x minus 5x is minus 2x. 6y minus 6y is 0y, so it disappeared. 30 minus 6 is 24. One suggestion I have for you here, when I do this, in order to remember that I'm subtracting every time, I write the minus under every single one. So then I remember 3x minus 5x, 6 minus 6, 30 minus 6. That just helps me to remember that I'm subtracting instead of accidentally adding things together, since adding is usually the more common way to solve. So now we have negative 2x equals 24. We're going to divide both sides by negative 2, and we get x equal to negative 12. Now that we know that x is negative 12, we can substitute that back in to find the value of y. So let's use the positives equation here. Both of them are actually positive, so it doesn't matter. Let's plug in negative 12. 3 times negative 12 is going to be negative 36. Then plus 6y equals 30. We need to add 36 to both sides this time to get rid of it off the left. 6y is going to be equal to 30 plus 36, so 66. Dividing both sides by 6, and I would end up with y would be equal to 11. So our final solution then, 11 is y, so that was when we plugged in negative 12 for x. Check your understanding. Use elimination to solve this system. Pause the video now and complete the check. Check your answer. You should have found the coordinate negative 3, 14. Here we can see we have plus 3y plus 3y, so we need to subtract. Again, I'm going to write subtract under all of them, so I remember that that's what I'm doing. Negative 2 minus 7 is negative 9 with the x. 3 minus 3 is 0, so that's gone. 48 minus 21 is equal to 27. Then dividing both sides by negative 9, I would get x equals negative 3. Plugging it back in. I'm going to actually use this first one because if I do negative 2 times negative 3, I get a positive number, which is 6. So plus 3y equals 48. Then if I subtract 6 from both sides, I get 3y equals 42. Dividing both sides by 3, y is equal to 14. Check. Example 4. Write and solve a system of equations using subtraction. Our real context here is computers. May and Kara build computers from parts and sell them to make a profit. May can build a computer in 0.9 hours, and Kara can build one in 1.2 hours. During a typical week, May and Kara spend a total of 15 hours building computers. One week, May builds twice as many computers, and the two spend a total of 24 hours on their projects. How many computers do May and Kara each make during a typical week? So first we need to write our two equations, then we can decide what method would be the best. First, let's define our variables. Let's say that M is the number of computers that May built, while K is the number of computers that Kara built. Since that's what we want to know is how many do each of them build. Let's write our two equations based on what we know. So first, we know that May's time spent and Kara's time spent, they spent 15 hours. So May's time plus Kara's time is 15 hours. Well, the time that it takes May to build a computer is 0 0.9 hours times how many of her computers she gets, while Kara's is 1.2 hours for each computer. So if we combine the time and the time, we get that time. That's for their typical week. Then in a different week, May builds twice as many computers, which means she is two times more than normal, while Kara just did her usual. That particular week, they spent a total of 24 hours. So our two equations then would be 0.9m plus 1.2k equals 15, and 2 times 0.9m plus 1.2k equals 24. We could multiply this out and say 1.8m, but for this we can just leave it. Then let's write them vertically so we can use elimination. We can see right here, in that particular week, Kara still did 1.2 compared to her typical week 1.2. They didn't change, which means the only difference between the typical week and the week we had was how many made it. 
So let's use subtraction to eliminate Kara. If we do that, we have 0 0.9 minus 1.8, we get negative 0 0.9, or 0 0.9 minus 0 0.9 twice would now be negative 0 0.9. And then 15 minus 24 is negative 9. If we divide both sides by 0 0.9 and it's negative, then we say that m is equal to 10. Now that we know m is equal to 10, let's substitute that back in and solve for k. Working our way through to solve for k, finally we would find that k equals 5. So our coordinate here, if we say m and k, we add 10 and 5. That would mean that during the typical week, May builds 10 computers while Kara builds 5. Since they can't sell parts of computers, they're just doing whole computers here, it makes sense that we have whole number answers. Again, double check in your context that what you get makes sense. So 10 computers and 5 computers would be viable solutions for how many computers they could build.